Hi, Cat here for Lightweight Digital. As it's almost May the 4th again, which is the yearly anniversary for Lightweight 3D, now under control of Lightweight Digital, I thought I'd pick up from where we were last year, where we converted a very old Lightweight 7.5C asset from Andrew Crook into a fully updated Lightweight physically based rendering engine edition with the proper surfacing system using principal BSTF and car paint. If you haven't checked out that video, I highly recommend doing it. You can check it out in the Lightwave channel on YouTube. Here we've got the fighter in place. Now, there are a couple of things that I want to point out here. While this is pretty good, we've got our volumetric engines in here. Uh, we've got some engine plumes that animate over time. You can see them kind of going there in VPR, although it's a little bit fuzzy. They are animated. Um, there's one thing that's kind of missing, and I'm going to demonstrate that now, but just going to the front of the ship, and we can see kind of a hint of it being driven through the use of volumetric lights behind the ship. And what we're after here is a rear engine glow so that when uh, we're looking down the barrel or the nose of a ship or we have the engines kind of facing opposite towards camera, uh, we have some kind of like volumetric glow. And like this happens to be you know okay. We might want to add another kind of element to this to help it out. And we can either crank up the volumetric settings, but then they look a little bit funky when we go to the other side of the ship uh, per light, um, or we can use another light with lens flares on it. Now, it's entirely possible that I could go and turn the lens flares onto each one of these individual lights, but because of the way that certain studios will break things out, certain artists will do certain things, it's actually easier to add it as a, another light to the system. So we're going to go and create another light. I'm just going to copy the current one that's existing there that I had, which is the engine point light. It was set to be a volumetric light, which is also kicking off light on the uh, object itself. So we're going to rename this before we do anything. So we're going to right click and rename this. We're going to call this engine point butt glow. and lens flare, just the LF stands for. Okay. And we're gonna turn off the effect fuse, the effect specular on this. We're gonna turn off the effect volumetrics on this. We can leave effect OpenGL on, and we'll talk about a couple of things about that in a moment. Let's turn on the lens flare, and we'll see right away that we've got something that uh, has a very classic Lightwave lens flare. It looks like it just stepped out of the 90s. Lightwave was the first package commercially to introduce lens flares. Don't remember, don't forget. Um, and it still has a very, very fantastic, robust lens flare system that did go through a bit of an upgrade recently. So uh, we need to make, obviously, some changes to this so it doesn't look like this because we want to use it not as a lens flare, but as a behind object glow. So let's go over to the lens flare options panel. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to leave the fade off screen. We're going to change the intensity to this, back it off. We're going to turn on fade of fog, even though we don't have any fog in this scene. It's always good to have it work in all environments. So fade in fog is something that you would possibly have if you were flying this thing through Digabah or something like that, or maybe Cloud City or wherever it might be. We're also going to turn on fade with distance. Now this is going to basically turn the lens flare down based off of how far away it is from camera. So at 50 meters here, we've got something that looks pretty good. Let me just back the camera up and you can see how it will fade eventually. Of course, it's still appearing in front of the geometry, and we don't want that. So the next set of settings that we need to check here are we want to make sure that the center glow is on. That's actually what we're after. We don't need the red outer glow. But we're going to turn on, and we're going to get a warning down here when we do this. It says, this option should only be used to simulate glows at a distance, not lens flares. We know that, but that's what we're using it for. It's a hack. It's a cheat. It's a very cool cheat, and we want this cheat to work to our advantage. Now... Um, to give this a little bit more life, I'm going to go and add a envelope on the flare dissolve. So let's pop this envelope. Uh, we'll start at like uh, 50%, and then we're going to add a modifier on here, which is just going to be noisy channel. Okay, and it's got a little bit of scale to it. We can probably use this as default. You can see the noisy channel parameters here, but we're going to make a copy of this. So we can add it later. Now, we don't need any random streaks. So we can get rid of that because we're just going to use this as a flare that simulates engine glow. Okay, so now if we go to the more front side of the camera, 
we got something that looks pretty interesting. All right, so now I need to get it onto all these different points. So um, working with that individual light, make sure that I don't have parent place on. I can make four clones of this. Well, three, really, because I've already got the original one. Okay, so we can just go down the list. There's one, two, three, four. And if you so feel inclined, you can line them up with each particular one for the ship, corresponding with each engine, depending on how it goes. But now we've got something where all those individual lights when I was dragging them in the scene editor, were popping to the correct position off of their parent. Now, you'll notice here a little bit of a hole, a black hole, basically, because we've run into, by creating these additional lights, uh, a limit of how many lights LightWave will display, at least in OpenGL. Now, there's a way to round that, and it is going to the option to and by hitting D, you get the preferences tab to come up, and you can just maximize the amount of volumetric lights. Okay, so I don't really generally like to go above eight. It's not really necessary for me to look at stuff in OpenGL with a whole bunch of lights all over the place. Uh, sometimes even set it to two because I've only got my key light and my uh, environment light that I want to look at, and then everything else can just be off. And the way that this is determined is basically the first two lights that are picked up in the scene. Obviously, you're going to have a, a distant light, which is your default one, and then your environment light, which will be in there uh, typically on any new scene load. If not, start from default scene or create your new ones. But basically, the order of their creation determines whether or not they are uh, picked up by OpenGL. So first light was obviously the key light. Second one is the environment light. Uh, we go to three. You'll probably pick up a light somewhere else. The one that wasn't created. There we go, number four. And keep in mind, not all these uh, lights that I had in here had to open GL on, so. But they're still respecting the order of creation. So we keep pumping them up for numbers, and this might also have to do with the creation of pairs. Computers like even numbers, so if you go to eight, you get these other ones in here, you get 12 or 10 or 16, whatever it might be, things will start to fill in the blanks. Uh, eight is generally good, 16, no problem. Modern graphics cards can obviously handle this, but it just you know, it can be distracting if you're looking at a bunch of different lights and going, Well, wait a minute, where's this little specular hit coming from? and you don't realize that you've got a light in here that may not be active, but it's still going to be active in terms of OpenGL respecting it. So that's one thing that you need to be aware of. So when I was working with the scene editor and reparenting things, uh, things moved around quite nicely, but I'm gonna go in here and add additional changes to these envelopes because they were all copied from the same one. I'm just gonna offset their phase slightly and that way, when we go through each one of these and change it, we'll have some difference between the animation as they flicker. This one's four. Let's go uh, minus 0.35. Just offset them a little bit. Okay, so now when we go and enable VPR, we look at these lights from the front, our engine actually. We can see that they have some disparaging look to each other so it's not so mechanical looking and they're always going at the same rate remember lens flares 
uh, are only really visible in the camera view. That's what it is. It's a camera for a lens. Perspective view isn't really a camera. It's a pseudo camera. So if you want to see this effect, you need to make sure that you're in camera view. And then you can drag it along. You can see these just barely pulsing a little bit. You can adjust this to taste, of course. Um, very, very simple to do. Load in or create a bunch of different envelopes. Make your own envelopes if you want. And you can get that nice animated effect. So that when you've got a, a ship flying by, camera it has some breakup on those lows. Remember, though, if you... Uh, copy this hierarchy, you make a clone of it, or you're using instances and you're copying the lights to the instances and they're all in the right positions, they're all going to still have the same copied envelope. So you'd have to go in and break those up a little bit. You can also set them up, however, um, for using other inputs like world coordinates using a texture channel. So there's another way to break them up. And that way they won't look the same no matter how many copies you've made of the same one because they'll get their coordinates from where they exist in 3D space rather than an envelope uh, based off of an oscillator or uh, some type of frequency. All right, so that gives us the ability to get those flares in there. But if I'm going to go and break this out, um, what about you know render time? Okay, let's say I don't want these because I want them to be composite. Now, instead of going and selecting each one of these and then physically turning them off, from the renderer, like I just did here, there's a global option to do this. So go into the render options property tab. We need these on, of course. And you'll see that enable lens flares is either on or off. And I have a shortcut that I've made for the buttons there, and I can also change their intensity. So if I want to jack the intensity of these up, right now it was at 10%. Uh, Let's say go to 200%, which make them 20%. Global lens flare intensity, let's go 400%. These will increase. But if you just want to turn them on, turn them off, real easy way to do it. And you've got excellent control over them. So whatever this is, it's going to be 100% of that. 200% would be 20 40, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so that's a very fast way to make sure that you get that taken care of. But also, don't forget, in the buffer system, these actually exist as a buffer. So if we go to the search, go lens, you can now actually export a buffer with just the lens flares. Now, one more thing before we go in this particular video, because we're going to do another one with the X-Wing, is that in order to lens flares to sh properly show up with alpha channel in the renderer, you need to enable something under the image processing tab, which is called flare to alpha. Now this does not have any type of interface to it. It's just a image filter that basically says, hey, you're a lens flare, you're volumetric light. I want your volumetric effect or your lens flare effect to appear in alpha. When you hit F9, it will produce the alpha channel effect of that flare or volumetric light and keep it present in that buffer or in your final render version or in your alpha version. So when this is done rendering, we'll see values here that correspond to the red areas that are just glowing outside of the ship. Those will actually have values in the alpha channel. Now, why isn't that always on by default? Uh, there's actually a couple different really good reasons. It comes down to workflow and compositing needs. And there's also tricks that you can use uh, for when you need that to take place. So you can see here, watching up in this section, the values change where it says A, the small A there at the end, it says 1.4, 1.379. But not only that, you can go into alpha and we can just barely see that we've got some alpha there. As you can see, the values change. So there's the full ship, but we've got just a little bit of alpha values right outside. And that's how simple it is. All right, we'll be back in another video very shortly.